The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So let's start right away with stuff that we will need to see before we can go on to more advanced things. So hopefully yesterday in recitation you heard a bit about vectors. How many of you actually knew about vectors before that? Okay, that's the vast majority. If you're not one of those people, well, hopefully you will learn about vectors right now. I'm sorry that the learning curve will be a bit steeper for the first week, but hopefully um, you will adjust fine. If you have, you know, trouble with vectors, do go to your instructors, recitation instructors, officers for, you know, extra practice if you feel the need to. Uh, you'll see it's pretty easy. So, just to remind you, a vector is a quantity that has both a direction and a magnitude or length. So, So concretely, the way you draw a vector is by some row like that, okay? And so it has a length and it's pointing in some direction. And so now the way that we compute things with vectors typically is we introduce a coordinate system. So if we're in the plane x, y axis, if we're in space, x, y, z axis, so usually I will try to draw my x, y, z axis consistently to look like this. And then I can represent my vector in terms of its components along the coordinate axis. So that means when I have this row, I can ask how much does it go in the x direction, how much does it go in the y direction, how much does it go in the z direction. And so, for example, let's call this vector A. So a small convention, uh, when we have a vector quantity, we put an arrow on top to remind us that it's a vector. If it's in a textbook, then sometimes it's in bold because it's easier to typeset. Uh, if you've tried, you know, in your favorite word processor, there's bold is easy and vectors are not easy. Um, so the vector, you can try to decompose in terms of unit vectors directed along the coordinate axis. So the convention is there's a vector that we call i hat that points along the x-axis and has length 1. There's a vector called j-hat that does the same along the y-axis and a k-hat that does the same along the z-axis. And so we can express any vector in terms of its components. So the other notation is a1, a2, a3 between these square brackets. Well, Maybe I should say angular brackets. So the length of a vector we denote by, if you want, it's the same notation as the absolute value. So that's going to be a number. Or as we say now, a scalar quantity. Okay, so a scalar quantity is a usual numerical quantity as opposed to a vector quantity. And its direction sometimes called d of a, and that can be obtained just by scaling the vector down to unit length. For example, by dividing it by its length. Okay. So, well, there's a lot of notation to be learned. So, for example, if I have two points P and Q, then I can draw a vector from P to Q, and that vector is called vector PQ. Okay? So maybe we call it A. But a vector doesn't really have necessarily a starting point and an ending point. Okay? So if I decide to start here, and I go by the same distance in the same direction, this is also the vector A. It's the same vector. 
So a lot of vectors will draw starting at the origin, but we don't have to. Okay. So let's just check and see how things went in recitation. Um, where did I put it? So let's say that I give you the vector 3 to 1. And so what do you think about the length of this vector? Okay. I see an answer forming. So a lot of you are answering the same thing. Maybe I shouldn't spoil it for those who haven't done it yet. Okay, I think the overwhelming vote is in favor of answer number two. Uh, I see some sixes. I don't know. That's a perfectly good answer too. But hopefully <laughs> in a few minutes it won't be I don't know anymore. So let's see. How do we find... the length of a vector 3, 2, 1. Well, so this vector A, it comes towards us along the x-axis by three units. It goes to the right along the y-axis by two units. And then it goes up by one unit along the z-axis. Okay, so it's pointing towards here. That's pretty hard to draw. So how do we get its length? Well, maybe we can start with something easier, the length of a vector in the plane. So observe that, you know, A is obtained from a vector B in the plane. Let's say B equals 3 i hat plus 2 j hat. And then we just have to still go up by one unit. Okay? So let me try to draw a picture in this vertical plane that contains A and B. If I draw it in the vertical plane, so that's the z-axis, that's not any particular axis, then my vector B will go here, and my vector A will go above it, and here that's one unit, and here I have a right angle. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that length A squared equals length B squared plus 1. Now, we are reduced to finding the length of B. But the length of B we can again find using the Pythagorean theorem in the xy plane because here we have a right angle, here we have three units, and here we have two units. 